Okay, hello everyone. So, really quickly, what I'm going- well, not really quickly. What I'm going to do is something that's not necessarily going to be applicable to class. As a matter of fact, for at least the purposes of the undergrad class, it's not going to be applicable to class. Um, however, let me go ahead and close that. I'm going to mess around with something that I want to see how well it'll work. And this is going to be an attempt, we'll see how good of an attempt it is, to model a centrifugal fan in two dimensions, not three. So let's go ahead and take a look at our XY plane, because this is a two dimensional simulation. This is the thing it's going to exist on. So we're going to start with something fairly simple. This is just going to be a fan. Uh, how big do we want it to be? Uh, let's see here. Apply radius dimension. So we probably want it to be a couple inches in diameter. So we're going to go with 30 millimeters radius, right? So this is going to be. Uh, okay, let's just actually just do straight up two inches divide by two. Oh, hold on. Um, I just, it's literally one inch. So I'm just going to click okay for a second here. So if we go into the sketch, hold on a second. Does that parameter show up outside? Oh, hold up. Why, there's a menu here that's hidden from even me. There we go, close. Let me close that and see if there's any parameters here. There are no design parameters. Okay. Well, we'll uh, edit this 3D cat again. We'll go into the sketch. We will edit this sketch. We will apply a radius dimension of, you know what? I know what one inch is. Why am I, why am I doing this hard mode? Um, 25.4 millimeters. So this is a two inch diameter fan. And rotational radius. And we're gonna go ahead and extrude this and we're gonna say this fan is going to be, um, a second here. going to be the fan depth. It is going to be zero, 0 0.75 inches is give or take 20 and we'll go with 18 millimeters. So this is our kind of the rotational area of our fan right here. Uh, so let's see here if we create another sketch here. Um, where is my view normal button? I'm blanking on uh, how to be normal. Hold on a second here. Uh, show dependencies, create reference geometry. Hmm. Maybe there just isn't one or I don't remember where it is. No matter. Uh, let's see here. So we're going to go back. We're still going to sketch on this face. We're going to create a inner sort of an entry for the air. So I should have actually dimensioned this. We're going to apply a radius dimension. This is going to be an 
inner radius and we're going to go with 10 millimeters. This is parameterized so we can change this later. A lot of other good stuff, but we are going to extrude cut through all. Uh, in the other direction. So we have a hole in the middle here. We are also going to extrude, but we're not going to interact it. Is actually no, I lied. We don't. We don't need that. We do, however, need this circle here. So next up, this is going to be our rotating region. So we're going to want to make some fan blades. Let's create a sketch on this face and make a very, very basic sort of kind of fan blade-ish thing. This is going to be a very non-ideal fan blade, by the way. Um, we're going to inwards offset probably on the order of one millimeter. Not even smaller than that. We're going to go with half millimeter offset. So this is going to be our blade. Uh, We're going to connect the ends with some lines here so we have a closed thing. Oh, it ended my line. There. Again, very likely to not be a very good fan. That's okay. However, we are going to extrude this, I believe, by 10 mil. 10. Well, whatever our fan, um, I'm just going to let that be 0.1 for the moment. And let's go ahead and pick up, um, where's, where's my other parameter? We want the fan depth. That's what we want for this. So, let's see here, dollar sign. Uh, but we do not want to merge. None. We do not want to merge this thing. We do, however, want to cylindrical pattern this thing. Let's see here. So we want to pattern in a circular pattern. And we want... We'll call this fan blade count. And we're probably going to want somewhere in the neighborhood of 12-ish. Something like that. Uh, we'll go ahead and click OK. We do not want to merge. Because what we're going to do here right now is we're going to do a Boolean subtract. From body one, we're going to subtract everything else. Uh, we don't even need to keep tool bodies, honestly. So we're going to click OK. We're left with one body. We have this air volume with a whole bunch of gaps in the middle. And if we need to, we can come back through later and modify this sketch. Let's actually go ahead and do that now. Um, like, say, for example, I want this to be a much more pronounced turn like that. Hit update 3D CAD, and oh, hey, look, all these blades have a much more pronounced turn all of a sudden. So we can modify the shape of this fairly fluidly if we need to. So now we need to make a outlet. So start on the XY plane. 
we're going to create a sketch. We are going to project, oh, oh let me control Z that. We're going to project as construction, just so we know where this is. And in the, we want to pick up a tangent line. Can I hide Just keep on hiding until I can kind of see what I'm doing here. Okay. So we want to probably pick up with a line that touches this circle. But we want two things here. This needs to be tangent. Why won't it let me do that? Oh, wait, hold up. Yeah, duh, there's no way for a point. You notice I was selecting the end point of the line. There's no way for a point to be tangent to a circle, but a line can be tangent to a circle. So that kind of makes sense. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to create another line, which is going to snap onto this, which is going to be horizontal as well. We're going to join these with a vertical line. Can I round that off, possibly? So what we're going to do is we're going to try and create... Uh, should this be a point on arc? I think this wants to be a three-point circular arc. So we have a point on our line over here. And... This wants a couple of constraints here. These want to be tangent. These want to be tangent. Trim away that line. And quarter radius, we'll call this four millimeters to are, why won't it let me do that? Yeah, there's a pair of tangent constraints. Yeah, that's fine. Um, let's, let's try this again. And outlet height and uh, 12 millimeters. Something's over defining this. I'm not quite sure what, honestly. What happens if I delete that? That's fine. What about this? Is overdefined. Well, this length wants to be defined. Let's go ahead and do that. This will be like uh, 15 millimeters 
ish. Oh, eh, I'm uh, being silly. There's an obvious way this is not going to work right now. Um, hmm. Okay, tell you what, what we're going to do here is we are going to extrude this. This is going to be by the fan depth. So let me type this in. Nope. Dang it. That's what I wanted. Okay, do not merge. Do import. Uh, you know, what? we're just going to do this, and what we're going to do here is we're going to come in and change the fan, the blades. We're going to edit this fan blade. Uh, nothing that dramatic. Hmm. Where is a uh, model visibility ball? Cancel. Let's not modify that just yet. Restore hidden faces. Let's go ahead and edit this sketch. And mostly what we're going to do is we're just going to repeat the same. Actually, hold on. We're just going to kind of do it the other way. So we start with a spline right about there. And extend right about there. And it's going to kind of turn. up to right about there. We're going to offset in that direction by, I think it was a half millimeter. Oh, half millimeter. Half. Yep. And then go ahead and delete all these things. Okay, boom. So now we have fan blades that are actually more or less rotated the right way. Uh, so, you know what? We're just gonna see if this works at all. Uh, that's okay. So we're gonna we have two bodies, which is important. When I did this extrude, I told it to imprint. That's right. Okay. So hold on. Let me rename this as outlet. This is an inlet. I'm going to update and close. And we're going to take this and make new geometry parts. Parts, parts. Let's see here. So we have an inlet. 
see here. Split by contact. Split by contact. And let's just pull up a scene so we can see what the heck we're talking about here. Okay, so we have perfect. Those are touching. That will be important. Um, we have just walls. We have just walls. We have an outlet. Inlet. Perfect. Okay. So we are going to assign parts to region, a new region for each part. And importantly, there's an interface between them. That's good. Okay. Now we need to define some continua. Um, these will both kind of have the same continua. This is going to be a two-dimensional, steady, uh, gas, segregated flow, ideal gas, simulation. Uh, we'll do segregated flow temperature. It does need to be turbulent. Uh, we don't need any of this other stuff. Gravity, that should be fine. Okay, close. Uh, so, that should be good. That's fine, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so body one is our fan. And what we're going to do here is we are going to say... Actually, hold on. We need to go down here to, we already have a coordinate system, but we're going to need a new reference frame. New rotating reference frame relative to the origin in the Z direction. So I actually want this rotating the other way. Um, so this is going to be zero, zero, negative one. And we're gonna go with, uh, 1800 RPM. RPM. And we're going to tell it that, hey, you are stationary, but you're stationary in a rotating reference frame. Mm, that's interesting. Okay. Uh, we're going to set this to a stagnation inlet, uh, which basically just means that the stationary air that comes in would have these properties. The air won't actually be stationary coming in. Um, but if it were stationary, it would have certain properties. And then our outlet physical value let's see here. Our outlet is going to be a pressure outlet. Let's save. And let me What this? There we go. Forgetting how to spell that, but whatever. Good enough. Uh, and we need to. Build a mesh. We definitely cannot run this yet. Uh, new Boolean, uh, not Boolean, badge for 2D meshing. I'm going to badge both of these. I want to execute. New um, mesh, automated mesh, 2D. We're going to do a poly prism layer mesh on both of them. Base size, we'll call it. Uh, this is a pretty small fan. We're going to call base size one millimeter prism layer thickness. We'll Leave most of this alone. Uh, surface proximity is going to need to be significant. Um, minimum size needs to, well, we're going to let this be really small. 2.5% target size is one. Um, we already set that. So let's do some concurrent meshing on both. Wait a second here. Uh, that are partially coincident with the Z0 plane. Oh, right, okay. Uh, by angle. Oh, I kind of wish I hadn't done that, but whatever. Uh, split by angle. Execute, and then now it should let us select both of these. Execute. Let's take a look at what this mesh looks like. Uh, scenes, new scene, mesh. 
yeah, I'm going to want to do something about that. Um, okay, a couple things here. First off, we're going to do a surface control. We're going to do a surface control on our con. Oh dear. Um, on this, and all we're going to say here is disable the prism layer. Nothing fancy. Let's rerun this mesh, see if that cleans that up. Aha, okay. Uh, well, yes and no. We're also going to actually set some new target. So we're going to actually set this to a 3%. Uh, so about 10%. Minimum size, two decimal, 5%. Um, and also in general, I'm going to knock off two prism layers, I think. I'm sorry, knock off one prism layer, but we do need to turn down the prism layer thickness. It's a pretty serious issue in these corners. So we might have some issues in here. I'm kind of not liking that very much, but we will see how troublesome that gets. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to disable um, the prism layer there. Let's try and execute this and see what happens. Would have preferred if those lined up. They don't, but I mean, they actually line up for a lot of it. If you look at it closely. So that's actually probably going to be a lot better. Um, I definitely don't like this. I might have to modify that. So let's go in here. And we might just have to truncate this at some point. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go in, I believe this was sketch four, we edit sketch four, what we can do here is we can kind of ever so slightly clip this corner. So the angle isn't going to get infinitesimally small, it's no longer completely tangent. We can probably do the same down here, actually, now that I'm thinking about it. Um, like we do need it to like not be a sharp, sharp corner, but it doesn't need to be you know, that. Let's see here, we just trim those away. Okay. Okay, that's probably better. Let's see here. Update 3D CAD, close. Um, update. I mean, really, if I just rerun this mesh, it should update everything it needs to. Still has a little bit of weirdness going on there, but it's a lot better than it was. Uh, ditto over here. Still has a little bit of weirdness, but better than it was. I do, however, want to turn down the growth rate by a lot. Let's just turn it to slow and see what that looks like. Better. I don't like it a huge amount, but it's a relatively small mesh, so this is probably fine-ish. I don't know why the cells are so small up there. Did I select the wrong thing? Um... I did, yeah, look at that. Okay. So I accidentally selected an extra surface on body 15. I think. Wait, what? Hold up. What's going on here? Something's not right. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Well, I'm not sure why, but we'll go with it for the moment. Let's try 
try this again. There we go, that's closer to what I was expecting, I think. Okay, now I'm properly confused. Oh, it's not splitting them because why? Okay, you know what? Hold on a second here. Let's just... Um, we're actually just going to edit this 3D CAD and do a couple things here. We're going to rename... Plane. Okay, click. Rename. Plane. Name wall name outside wall. We're going to go ahead and hide both of these for a second. Interface, okay. Right click hide, rename interface. Click hide. Okay, that should be better. Update, close, and let's try this again. New geometry parts. Oh, okay. Now, what I should have done was also rename the outer plane. Let me fix this really fast. Out of plane. Name of plane. Okay, update, close. Let's try that again. New geometry part. Okay, so we got the fan blades. That's good. We have our inlet. That's good. We have our interface. That's good. Out of plane. Our wall. Our simulation plane. That is all good. Let's try and badge both of these. It looks like it succeeded. Good. Let's take our automated mesh and point it at our parts again. We're going to point this at our interface. Um, what we probably need to do is get rid of this. And we probably need to recreate these. So assign parts to regions. Each part, each part surface, apply, close. Let's set our boundary conditions really quickly here. This is just a stagnation inlet. This is a pressure outlet. And the motion specification is stationary, but it's stationary in a rotating reference frame. Uh, And I'm just going to nuke this mesh scene and create a new one. Make my life a little bit easier. Um, that's not looking terrible. It's uh, actually looking pretty decent, honestly. Uh, let's see here. Uh, so if I hit save. Well, we have the mesh. So let's just give it a go, I guess, and see what happens. Um... It's clearly doing something. 
well, let's crank up the rotation rate. We're going to do 5,000 RPM. And let's look at, instead of total pressure, let's look at static pressure. Uh, definitely doing something. Maybe not quite doing what I wanted. We're going to try something else. Uh, let's see here. That is indeed a fluid region. Okay. Might be a little bit more complicated than I was expecting. It's definitely doing something, to be fair, to be absolutely fair. Let's actually take a look at a velocity vector scene. Yeah, no, it's kind of working, but also not really. Because notice there's really no flow over here where there should be flow basically everywhere. It's definitely doing something. Don't get me wrong. But it's uh, also kind of not doing... Well, actually, hold on a second here. Did I make the wrong body moving? I did. <laughs> that would absolutely do it. Let's try this again. You... Aha! Much better. Sort of. Oh, it stopped because... Uh... Turn this off. Perfect. So let's go down to scalar vector scene. It helps if you rotate the right thing. It really does. Uh, where's my vector scene? This vector scene, we're going to make this line interval convolution. So this is going to look weird. This is absolutely going to look weird. We're actually going to look at the velocity in the rotating reference frame. And we can see it's more following at least those blades for a little while. Uh, reference frames are admittedly kind of weird. They don't behave very intuitively. But this is absolutely blowing air. This is a centrifugal fan. Not a very good one, admittedly. It's got all kinds of things wrong with it. But it is a centrifugal fan. It is modeling flow uh, based on the rotation of these veins. Flow is coming in through these surfaces, getting caught, picked up by the veins, and being ejected through the outlet here. Uh, so... You want to know how much air it's moving, or how fast it's moving the air, I guess. Let's do a surface average velocity on the in the lab reference frame. He's like, this is it's like you bolted the fan to the table. You're measuring the velocity relative to the table not to the rotation of the fan itself. Um, where did my report go? So it's going at a solid like 25 miles an hour at the outlet here. We could turn down our rotation rate. Let's do like 2000 RPM again. And we should get much lower speeds. Actually, we're not getting all that much lower speed. It's definitely lower. Don't get me wrong, but it's uh, 
Looks like it's actually okay. It, it it dropped quite a bit. Still dropping. We do have this kind of this pocket of flow separation here, which is a little bit interesting. I think the clocking of the fan, like where the veins are physically located at this exact in this exact geometry, does have an effect on this. Let's see here. So, you know what? Let's just plot this. Uh, let's do a create monitor and plot from report. So it's working on it. Let's go ahead and drop this to 1000 RPM. Yeah, it's kind of uncertain about what this is. I'm trying to figure it out, but this is a highly unsteady thing, so. Okay, so what I'm actually going to do here is we're going to try something a little bit fancy. What time is it? I do need to step away in a little bit, but fancy is. Uh, we're going to try and make this a not a steady simulation. This is going to be implicit unsteady. Um, be sure, what options do I have based on this? Not really much. That should be fine. Um. Okay, hold on a second here. Ironically, I just realized there's probably a better mesh for this. Um, there's a dedicated turbo machinery mesh. So we could probably, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. This would have been exactly what I was after. So it's not something I've used before. Um, but oh boy, that would, uh, that probably would have cleaned this up significantly. Uh, I'm not going to deal with it now. Um, there is a more advanced form of kind of unsteady flow meshing that I'm tempted to take a look at, uh, but I don't have time at the moment. So for now, this will suffice to say you can do all kinds of interesting stuff like at least some form of simulation regarding a centrifugal fan in this case. You can also do axial fans and all kinds of other good stuff. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and leave that here for the moment, and I will talk to you later.